All right. Well, hello to whoever's watching this, whether it be my professor or some students or any random person. This is my art final, and for my art final, I am going to be making a fishing lure. So the type of fishing lure I'm making is called a Gibbs Polaris Popper, and um, it's part of the style of pencil popper fishing lures, and basically they're called poppers because they make a splash when you pull them through the water, and that splash attracts fish. And they're called pencil poppers usually because they're thin as compared with other lures. So the guy who invented this Polaris popper is named Stan Gibbs. And unfortunately, he died a few years back. But um, he was an absolute legend in the world of lure making. And he invented several different types of lures, including the metal lip swimmer, uh, the pencil popper, and uh, the popper that I'm going to be making. And he also created the Gibbs Lure Company, which is still around today and still selling wooden fishing lures. So as I said earlier, this is the lure I'm trying to replicate. And believe it or not, this actually is a wooden lure. Um, it just looks a lot better because it's covered in paint and epoxy. So obviously to start this project, I'm going to need a piece of wood. Ideally, I would use a cylinder of wood to start this project, but I didn't have any of those. So I actually had to start with a piece of the wood like the one in the picture, cut it in half into a rectangular prism, and then turn it on the lathe from there. Now, unfortunately, I don't own my own lathe, so I actually had to go to a friend's house to use his workshop, um, which was, he was very nice to let me do that. But I forgot my camera, of course, so I don't actually have video of me doing that, but it's not a super important part. I'm basically just making a cylinder. The majority of the shaping that I'm doing is going to be on a belt sander that I actually do own. So I'll just show you a video that I found on YouTube of what that might look like. So. As you saw earlier, he basically just started with a rectangular prism like I was talking about. And um, the lathe basically just spins the wood really fast. And you take your chisels and slowly remove little pieces of wood and shave it down into your desired shape. And once you have that shape done, you just want to sand it down a little to kind of make it nice and smooth. So on the day that I was making this, uh, it was actually really nice and sunny, and I also wanted to avoid getting any dust in the house. So it was a really easy decision for me to work outside. So I just took this piece of plywood, kind of laid it on the ground, put the belt sander on top, got an extension cord, and all the other tools that I needed, and kind of spread them out across my workspace. So at this point I just laid out everything that I was going to need for the project. Um, I'm using two part epoxy like I just showed. I used those two wooden blanks that I made with the lathe. I actually ended up only using one of them, but um, I just brought both of them. Those are some wooden dowels that I'm going to use later to um, plug the hole that I'm going to make in the wood in order to put the weight in. Those are a couple paint brushes. Two of them are foam and two of them are uh, you know, normal hair. And I didn't use those uh, hair ones. I ended up using the foam ones. And those are for the epoxy. Um, those are fishing hooks I just showed. And those are two lures that I was basically basing my work off of that they were already made so I could just kind of get an idea of how I'm doing and see if it looks like an actual lure. There's more hooks. And that right there is a case with all the Dremel tools that I'll be using in the video. I don't use all of them, but um, the case has plenty. And that was some drill bits that I'm going to be using. And then inside this little thing I have uh, a piece of lead. And I'll explain what you're going to use that for. It's basically going to be the weight of the fishing lure. And the reason you need that lead weight is because uh, wood's actually pretty light. And fishing lures need to be relatively heavy, so you got to weight them down a bit. And of course I have my safety glasses as well. 
just to keep safe and some pliers, and that's it. So here are my two wood blanks that I made in the lathe. As you can see, they're pretty nice looking, um, basically just cylinders of wood. The one I'm going to be using is actually this one, uh, and you can see it has a little flare out on the front of it there, just kind of like that Polaris popper picture did in the beginning, and um, that helps create the popping. And this right here is actually um, an already made lure that's very similar to the Polaris popper. I took the hooks off of it so you can see a little better. Um, and there's just a close up of it. You can see that it's got that nice cup in the front of it and that creates a really good splash in the water. And this one here is just a finished lure. It's actually not a Polaris popper, but it is a popper. You can see again, it has that cup in the front of it, um, which creates the pop. So the first thing I'm trying to do here is basically create that kind of flared out top that you saw in the picture in the beginning, and that's just to help with creating a bigger splash, which will attract more fish. It basically imitates a wounded bait fish, which is flashing its tail at the top of the water, and um, the fish love that, so it's a very effective technique for lures. So I'll just speed through this part, um, I'm just trying to create a more exaggerated neck there. You'll see it just start to take shape pretty quickly. And um, the goal is just to make sure you don't take too much off and you don't take too little off and to kind of refine the shape of the lure and make it consistent around all sides. So the finished product looks like that. Um, it's pretty simple, still a lot of work to do, but looking pretty good. <laughs> So the next thing that we're going to need to do is basically put weight in the lure because as I said earlier it's wood and it's way too light. So in order to weight this lure, I'm basically going to cut a hole in the lure and then put some weight in it and then basically plug that hole with the wooden dowel. So this actually takes a ridiculously long amount of time and you have to be really careful because if you're even slightly off vertical when you're drilling, uh, the, basically the drill bit's just going to come out the side and that would totally ruin the lure. Um, and if you go even a little bit off center then the lure's balance would be wrong and it might not float straight up and down, which would be bad as well. So this is what I came up with. Uh, I think it turned out all right. You can see the wooden dowel fits in there nicely, um, and that's all you really need to do. So now you need to take that piece of lead, and the nice thing about lead is it's a really soft metal, so you can actually bang it down into pretty much any shape you want with enough effort. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically bang it down until it's a nice little thin cylinder, and it can it's relatively the same size as that wooden dowel that I'm going to use. And then I'm going to slide it into the lure and uh, glue it in there. And this is the result. I'm not really sure how much weight this is. It's probably about half an ounce. So that should work well for this lure. So the next step is one of the more difficult things, if you ask me. Um, I'm using epoxy here, but technically you can use glue. I guess it doesn't really matter. Maybe I should have thought about that before I put so much effort into it. but. Um, you basically just need some sort of adhesive to hold the weight and the dowel inside of the lure.
and once you get that epoxy or glue all set um, inside the lure, you're basically just going to stick the weight in and then put the dowel in behind it to lock it in there and um, basically fill up the gap. So if you're using epoxy after a little while, you'll notice it will harden pretty quickly into a goo and then eventually into basically solid plastic. So after letting the epoxy dry for a whole day, I'm back at the belt sander again and now I'm trying to add that angle on the front of the lure. So for this next part, I'm going to be hollowing out the front of the lure to make that kind of cup shape. And for that, I'm going to be using a Dremel. And after I was done doing that, um, I just decided to put my name on the lure uh, by engraving it. This is one day later, and you can see the lure is really starting to take shape. Um, the epoxy is totally dry now, it's hard as a rock and I'm ready to move on to the next step and remove that ugly dowel from the end of the lure and really uh, finalize its shape. And at this point, I just decided to do a little sanding to make it a little bit more nice and smooth. So after I was done sanding, I decided to put these little brass eyelets in. And basically what they're going to do is they're going to hold the hooks in place uh, when the lure is complete. And I chose to use brass because brass is non-corrosive uh, or corrosive resistant, I guess. And I'm going to be using the lure in salt water, so that's really important. As you can see at this point, it's really starting to look like a lure, everything's coming together. And the next step is we're going to put some epoxy on it to seal the lure. So I actually built this little rig myself. It's just uh, three pieces of wood screwed together. Um, I put those split rings in the end and there's a little rubber band on one side. That basically keeps it in place and it allows it to adapt to any size lure while still holding it tight. And um, the two clips just attach to the front and the back of the lure and it basically holds it in place while you do any painting or epoxying that you need to. So here you can see I've got my two part epoxy, I just have to mix those two together thoroughly and then I can start putting it on the lure. So at this point I'm just applying the epoxy and uh, it's a five minute quick drying epoxy so I have to actually work pretty quickly to make sure it doesn't goo up while I'm in the middle of painting it on.
So like I said earlier, that epoxy only takes five minutes to dry, or the technical term is set, but it actually takes about an entire day to cure and fully harden. So after um, I finished epoxying, I basically had to wait until the next day. And right here, what I'm doing is I'm basically sanding the epoxy down. And this is not to remove all of the epoxy. It's basically just to make a rough surface so that I can paint on it and the paint will stay better. So as you can see here, I've created a nice rough surface for the paint to stick on. It actually looks like there's just wood there, but believe me, there is still epoxy. I didn't shave it all off. It's just nice and rough and the paint should stick on well now. So the first part of the painting process is to basically put one white coat. Um, if you have primer, that's obviously the best thing to use, but I didn't, so I just used normal white paint. And I put two coats on um, just to make sure that none of the uh, wood can be seen underneath it. And I'm only painting the body, I'm not painting the front. If you remember from the beginning of the video, this is the lure that I'm trying to replicate. And this lure is actually based on a species of bait fish called the Atlantic mackerel, which is native to North American waters and is one of the primary sources of food for striped bass. Now in order to create that color, I'm basically just going to be mixing some green, some blue, and some white to kind of try to get that uh, aquamarine shade and match the mackerel as best as I can. So the next part of the fish that we're trying to replicate is those beautiful black stripes in the back. And um, I'm just going to achieve that by taking a straight black paint and kind of squiggling all sorts of waves down the lure. And the final step here is just to give one last coat of epoxy to put a nice hard coating in the outside of the lure so when fish bite it and stuff and it lands in the sand, it won't get damaged. Um, and that'll really protect the paint and uh, make this lure hopefully last as long as it can. And this is the final product. So I think this lure came out really beautifully. And I've made maybe five, six, seven lures um, so far. Um, it's definitely not my first try. And this one is by far the best. Um, I think I did a pretty good job with the painting. Um, hopefully those brass uh, eyelets will never corrode and this lure will last a really long time. And um, the epoxy will keep it safe. So now the only thing left to do is to test the lure. So as you saw, I casted the lure, um, it worked perfectly, it flew through the air just like it should, and um, now this is it moving through the water and making that kind of splashing action that I was talking about earlier that mimics a wounded fish. So it might not look like much, but uh, the fish actually are pretty dumb and they will totally bite that. So that's pretty much the end of the video. Um, I definitely enjoyed making this project. I hope you enjoyed watching me make it and maybe you learned something too.